I can believe it, um, and mainly because of what happened with uh, Ahmed um, Hagazi uh, yes. early on yeah. uh, in the season where he was sold without Slavin uh, knowing about it mm. um, and without him saying, yeah, that's fine to sell him. I think he was a valued member of the squad, central defender. Um, and when your board are selling players without your understanding and, and accepting that that player is going to go without getting a replacement, I think you've got problems. You look at the team um, and you look at the, the, the body language and the spirit of the manager last night. For me, the players look like they're playing for him. The manager looks like he's really up for the fight. Even the sound bites afterwards in the, in the post-match interview where mm. he's talking about you know, preparing for the Villa game, the squad and the confidence and the buzz they'll be about at the training ground this morning. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't sound like a manager that doesn't want to be up for this challenge. That yeah. sounds like a manager that feels he's not far away. He's got a squad there that he's working with that he can see improvements. The result last night, 1-1 against Manchester City, although Manchester City had 77% possession and 26 shots at goal they managed to get the draw the keeper was outstanding the team spirit was there I don't think that looks like a manager that's down tools now when you look at the same Slavan Bilic when he left West Ham he had his hip was in bits he looked in pain and it was almost like a blessing sacking him because he, he wasn't up for the fight yeah in this on this occasion at West Brom I feel he's definitely up for the fight and I think he'll be bitterly disappointed to get the sack if he does get the sack well Simon I, I'm with Trevor on that but it, it clearly Simon I, I think that the fact of the matter is here that the West Brom hierarchy didn't legislate for that result last night no absolutely um, and the dynamic of it is that there's nothing wrong with a manager being very uncomfortable with a player being sold uh, there's everything wrong with briefing the press and taking it out of the private conversation you've had with your owners and taking it into a public domain position where you are compromising your relationship with those that ultimately employ you, if that is the blueprint and the erosion of the relationship. I remember a few years ago, the ownership at West Bromwich Albion is Chinese and the ownership at Birmingham was Chinese. And I remember a few years ago that Gary Rowett was batting his eyes at every single football club that would come through the door because he had a modicum of success at Birmingham. And the, and the football world said, you've got to give this guy a new contract. And I think the Chinese ownership was, hang on a second, he's got two or three years left on his current contract. Why have we got to give him a new contract now? But that's the way football works. So they gave him a new contract with an increase on it and Gary Rowett turned it down. And my understanding is, is that it offended the Chinese owners yeah. and that put them up the writing on the wall. I think if you, if you don't operate in a, an inclusive way, in a respectful way to certain ownership, it takes it very badly. Mm. And I think that started to sow the seeds between perhaps uh, Slav and Bilic and the current ownership. Now also, they are in the business of staying in the Premier League. The yo-yo club mentality is not quite fair because West Bromwich Albion stayed in the Premier League for quite some time. They had a yo-yo mentality in the early part of the 2000s where Jeremy Peace was the chairman because I think their business model was quite comfortable going up and down and making sure that financially they were on a, on a decent balance. What I dislike about this is A, I think it's probably wrong. I don't like the fact that it's in the public domain and everyone seems to know mm. what's happening to this guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it can only be coming from either Sam's people, if Sam's being spoken to, right? Or the club itself, and the club are briefing the press about it. That's mm. incredibly disrespectful. I know it's the blueprint for this industry, and I know that it happens. Whenever I tried to hire a fire manager, it was my real damnness to try and keep it out yeah. of the public domain because I felt that was the right way to well, operate. It's respectful, isn't it? Now you look at Bilic and say it is respectful and but football doesn't have much respect. You could you could say you could say Slavin Bilic had no respect. Yeah. It could say Slavin Bilic had no business. But I think that's passion, isn't it? That's like he's in it with the truth. He's a big boy and he knows yeah, that, he knows he's in it with the truth and he knows that that player that was sold and, and where you may have made a right, difference. Trev, is absolutely right. Is Bilic the only thing that was holding Bilic up at West Bromwich at West Ham was his pants, right? <laughs> in this instance now, he's a different dynamic. Yeah. He's he's ready for the fight. But when you want to get, when you want to stay in this division, you go to somebody that knows how to keep you in it. Yeah, and that yeah. probably is a Sam. And it's not an ambitious appointment. I, I, I think Sam's fabulous, and I think there's a lot of criticism of Sam Allardyce about being a dinosaur yeah. and not having forward thinking that's misplaced. Mm. Right, but well, he, there's, a, there's a very distinct possibility you get Sam Allardyce, you stay in the division. <laughs> 